Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Pakistan moving towards total security collapse. India snubs Pakistan for raising Kashmir issue during Israel-Palestine debate at UN. And Islamic scholars from India and Bangladesh discuss about religious extremism and terrorism. Let's start the show with Pakistan, a country that has harbored terrorism as an ecosystem and a foreign policy now faces a major challenge. Defense and intelligence agencies in Pakistan, which were supporters and protectors of terrorism, are no longer able to protect the terror ecosystem in the country as the entire setup is about to collapse on itself. But repeated incidents of killing terrorists and civilians on Pakistani soil now raise questions about the security situation in the country. However, the country has still not refrained from blaming India repeatedly for its security collapse without any proof to back its claims. We have a report. Pakistan's terror ecosystem now faces a security threat originating from within. Islamabad's Army and Inter-Services Intelligence Agency, which once supported terrorism, now is no longer able to provide a safe haven for terrorists anymore. Repeated incidents of targeted killings orchestrated by unknown assailants upon wanted terrorists now raise questions about the country's security situation. The most recent incident in the long list of these targeted killings resulted in the death of Daud Malik in the Mir Ali area of North Waziristan. The founder of the terrorist organization Lashkar-e Jabbar, Malik was a close ally of one of India's most wanted terrorists and Jaish Muhammad chief Masood Azhar, the mastermind behind the 2019 Pulwama attack. After USA withdrew from Afghanistan, a lot of terrorist groups have become active there. To name a few, Al-Qaeda is active, ISIS is active, Taliban of course is active and the one that is creating maximum problem for Pakistan is a group called TTP, Tere Ke Taliban Pakistan and despite all the efforts, Pakistan has not been able to stop it. Pakistan has been trying to construct a fence on the Pakistan-Afghanistan border, also called as Durand Line. But the fence has proved very, very ineffective. The Afghan terrorists uh, cross at their will. Now, what happens is Pakistan has been, uh, there has been a phrase which is being used repeatedly, good terrorist and bad terrorist. You know, meaning uh, good terrorist means the ones who are on the side of the Pakistanis, you know, especially the ones acting against India. Mm. And the bad terrorist means the ones who are acting against Pakistan. But what you have to understand is this kind of a distinction is not very easy simply because terrorism gets mixed up with each other. Terrorists may be of any type against Pakistan, against India, but there is a lot, lot of common ground. They exchange weapons um, among them. They uh, help each other in carrying out narcotics. They help each other for carrying out resources. The killing of Daud Malik in broad daylight on Pakistani soil is the third incident of targeted killings orchestrated by unknown gunmen within a month. Prior to Malik's death, Shahid Latif, a conspirator behind the 2016 Pathan court attack, and Mufti Kaiser Farooq, a close associate of Hafiz Saeed, the mastermind behind the 2611 Mumbai attacks, met their fate at the hands of unknown assailants within days. Not just the killings of terror associates, but Pakistan's innocent civilians also face a severe security threat in their own country. Each Tanzim wants to show that it's doing a better job. The Pakistan's ISI, who are their paymasters and Pakistani army, that they're doing a much better job than the other two Tanzims. For their own living, they have to show to the world that they're creating adequate violence. Such repeated target killings of terrorists and civilians both in broad daylight itself ensure that the country is on a path of a total security collapse. Recently, Pakistan's largest province of Balochistan witnessed a major twin blast 
which resulted in the deaths of over 60 civilians who had gathered to participate in a procession organized to celebrate Prophet Muhammad's birth. However, Pakistan's administration in this case was quick to hold India's research and analysis wing known as RAW responsible for the security lapse in Balochistan. Organized presence जो है वो इस दशकगर तंजीम की बलूचिस्तान में इससे पहले नहीं थी। अब उनके ये जो हमले हो रहे हैं, जाहिर है हम इन्वेस्टिगेट कर रहे हैं कि बसाओ का जी होता है कि हमला कोई और करता है, कबूल कोई और करता है। जो मर्जी हो, वो दायिश हो, वो टीटीपी हो, वो कोई और हो, कोई भी किसी भी नाम पर वायलेंस कर रहा है। वायलेंस जो है वो सिर्फ स्टेट एक्सरसाइज करेगी वो कोई भी उससे हमें कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता है हम मजीद जो ये लोग जो फैसिलिटेशन का रोल प्ले कर रहे हैं जो भी कर रहा है वो कोई भी हो जो भी उसको आप नाम दे दें हमारे लिए ये सब एक है सबकी नानी एक है सबको एक जगह से हैंडल किया जा रहा है रॉ इन सब के पीछे इससे पहले जितने वाकयात हुए इस पर अभी इन्वेस्टिगेशन हो रही है इससे पहले जितने वाकयात हुए वो सब अनर्थ हुए जितने बड़े वाकयात बलूचिस्तान में और सब के पीछे जो है वो रॉ की इन्वॉल्वमेंट रही है और जो वो पाकिस्तान को जो कुवतें डिस्टेबलाइज करना चाहती हैं हम उनके अगेंस्ट जाएं पाकिस्तान अ कंट्री व्हिच इन द पास्ट हैज बीन प्रूवन टू शेल्टर द वर्ल्ड्स मोस्ट वांटेड टेररिस्ट ओसामा बिन लादेन एंड इवन टुडे इज द होम ऑफ सेवरल डेजिग्नेटेड टेररिस्ट्स लाइक मसूद अजहर एंड हाफिज सईद ऑल ऑफ होम आर की कंस्पिरेटर्स बिहाइंड एंटी इंडिया एक्टिविटीज Islamabad now is left with no option but to blame India and external forces for their security threats on its people. However, the fact still remains that it has a home for healthy and prospering terror ecosystem. And any attempts to damage and blame India are collectively just another attempt by Islamabad to shift the attention of its security breakdown away from itself. Moving on, in recent developments, Pakistan's persistent focus on the Kashmir issue continues to draw attention. During a recent address at the United Nations Security Council, Pakistan's envoy to the UN, Munir Akram, attempted to draw parallels between Kashmir and Palestine, evoking international law to argue that the struggle for self-determination cannot be equated with terrorism. However, India firmly rejected this comparison, emphasizing that it will not dignify Pakistan's references to Kashmir with a response. The discussion took place against the backdrop of the ongoing Israel-Palestine conflict, where US Secretary of State Antony Blinken drew parallels between terrorist attacks, notably referencing the 26-11 Mumbai terror attacks carried out by the Pakistan-based group lashkar e taiba Blinken underlined the Security Council's responsibility to condemn support for such terrorist attacks. Let's delve into the details in our next report. Pakistan's long-standing fixation on Kashmir doesn't appear to be waning anytime soon, as Islamabad continues to bring up the Kashmir issue in the United Nations Security Council. Recently, Munir Akram, Pakistan's representative to the UN, attempted to draw comparisons between Kashmir and Palestine during his UNSC address. In his speech, the Pakistani diplomat sought to draw parallels between the freedom struggle of the Palestinian people and the issue of terrorism in Kashmir. Munir Akram spoke without taking into account the gravity of the situation, asserting that under the international law, the struggle for self-determination and national liberation by people living under foreign occupation is legitimate and cannot be equated with terrorism. Pakistan condemns terrorism in all its forms and manifestations. Yet, under international law, the struggle of peoples living under foreign occupation for self-determination and national liberation is legitimate and cannot be equated with terrorism. It is the suppression of this struggle which is illegal. Throughout history, 
colonial powers have portrayed national liberation movements as terrorism. Some in this council have offered protection to their allies who are oppressing occupied peoples in Palestine and in Kashmir. Under the UN Charter, states have the right of self-defense against attacks on their sovereignty and territorial integrity. Yet, a state which is in forcible occupation of a foreign territory cannot invoke the right to self-defense against those whose territory it has illegally occupied. A serious and continuing concern. India, however, made it clear that it will not dignify Pakistan's mention of Kashmir with a response and will treat it with contempt. In response, India's envoy in the August Assembly criticized Pakistan's evasive stance and reminded Pakistan to stay on topic. Notably, the ongoing discussion was about Israel-Palestine conflict. There was a remark of habitual nature by one delegation referring to union territories that are integral and inalienable part of my country. I would treat these remarks with contempt they deserve and not dignify them with a response in the interest of time. Previously, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken drew a comparison between the terrorist attack carried by lashkar e taiba in Mumbai and Hamas in Israel, emphasizing that all acts of terrorism are unlawful and unjustifiable. Blinken highlighted similarities between the terrorist attacks by Hamas against Israel and those by the Pakistan-based terror group lashkar e taiba in Mumbai. He emphasized the Security Council's duty to condemn member states that provide support in terms of arming, financing and training to Hamas or any other terrorist group involved in such heinous attacks. Blinken's comments refer to the 26-11 Mumbai terror attacks perpetrated by the Pakistan-based terrorist organization. These attacks occurred in 2008 and resulted in the tragic loss of 166 lives, including six Americans. All acts of terrorism are unlawful and unjustifiable. They're unlawful and unjustifiable whether they target people in Nairobi or Bali, in Luxor, Istanbul or Mumbai, in New York or Kibbutz, or Kibbutz Berry. They're unlawful and unjustifiable whether they're carried out by ISIS, by Boko Haram, by Al-Shabaab, by lashkar e taiba or by Hamas. They're unlawful and unjustifiable whether victims are targeted for their faith, their ethnicity, their nationality, or any other reason. Many view Pakistan's persistent efforts to raise the Kashmir issue at the UN as an attempt to divert attention from its own domestic challenges. Pakistan is currently grappling with a severe economic crisis and is also struggling to address the impact of the Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan. It's crucial for Pakistan to cease using the UN platform to propagate falsehoods about Kashmir. And verifiable action. Now let's turn our attention to the region of Jammu and Kashmir in India, where a persistent challenge remains as terrorists based in Pakistan time and again attempt to infiltrate. Their primary objective is to smuggle arms and ammunition across the border with the intent of orchestrating terror attacks and destabilizing the peaceful atmosphere within the Union territory. However, Vigilant and highly prepared security forces have consistently thwarted each and every one of these infiltration endeavors. Their unwavering commitment to safeguarding the region and preserving peace has proven to be highly effective. We have this special report. The stringent security measures along the line of control have consistently thwarted the infiltration attempts of Pakistan-based terrorist groups into the region of Jammu and Kashmir. A recent incident on October 21, 2023, in the Uri sector of Baramula, exemplified this. 
based on precise intelligence from agencies and the Jammu and Kashmir police regarding a potential infiltration in Uri sector by heavily armed terrorists from across the LOC. Army troops were promptly placed on high alert and the counter-infiltration grid was reinforced. Around 3 p.m., vigilant troops intercepted the group, leading to a fierce exchange of gunfire that continued until dusk, ultimately resulting in the elimination of two terrorists. A thorough search of the incident site yielded crucial evidence, including two AK series rifles, six pistols, four Chinese grenades, blankets, and two blood stained bags containing Pakistani and Indian currency notes, Pakistani medicines, and food items. Every year, before the pass is closed, closed down, there's an increased attempt to infiltrate because they know for the next four, five, six months, passes will be closed and the infiltration will become extremely difficult. And they do not want peace and tranquility to prevail in Jammu and Kashmir. Second thing, there are about five or six areas which because of topographical reasons, because of dense forests, high mountains, riverine terrain, lend, lend themselves to easier infiltration. These areas are firstly Gurez, second is Tangdhar sector, third is the Uri sector, fourth is the Rajari Pun sector, fifth is the Samba sector and sixth is the Gurdaspur sector. Invariably, infiltration is taking place only in these sectors. And because these sectors lend themselves to easier infiltration, because of availability of places to hide, it is for this reason that infiltration takes place from this area. Intelligence sources have disclosed the presence of numerous terror camps in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir which collaborate with Pakistani security agencies to facilitate infiltrations into India. These terrorists not only receive training, but also logistical support and weapons to carry out their activities in Jammu and Kashmir. Indian security forces have discovered multiple underground tunnels near the LOC that terrorists use for infiltration. To combat this, the Border Security Force in India has adopted drone-mounted ground-penetrating radars to detect the presence of these tunnels. Tunnels do not lend themselves to surveillance by either satellites or by radars or by drones. Secondly, they are easier to push in infiltration, infiltrators, easier to push in drugs, money, weapons and ammunition and they are far easier to push infiltration than overland. Indian Army is absolutely alert, BSF is alert, the Indian Army is alert, there is a very tight security grid that has been established. So all attempts over ground, 99% is being taken care of. Since the abrogation of Article 370 and Article 35A in August 2019, Jammu and Kashmir has been experiencing the dividends of peace. The region has witnessed substantial development, attracting investments in sectors such as tourism, hospitality, retail and manufacturing. However, this progress does not align with the agenda of neighbouring Pakistan and it offers terrorists an opportunity to infiltrate the Union territory and disrupt its tranquility. Pakistan's persistent efforts to undermine peace in India, orchestrated from the shadows, have unfortunately become a recurring issue. Despite internal challenges, including a struggling economy, Pakistan continues to support terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir. In contrast, India maintains a well-structured framework to counteract such threats and safeguard the region's peace and stability. Now let's talk about India and Bangladesh, a true all-weather friendship between countries that have stood with each other through thick and thin. The two neighbours not only share an international border and a strong bilateral relation, but also a strong connect from the past, as India was the one to extend its help during Bangladesh's freedom struggle in 1971. At that time, India not only acted as a protector, but also played the role of a supporter 
as Bangladesh struggled to snatch its freedom from Pakistan's clutches. Today, continuing the same spirit, both countries combat terrorism and extremism in their own unique ways. The freedom struggle of Bangladesh in 1971 was a moment in history that has kept Bangladesh still bleeding because of crimes and atrocities by Pakistan. The army during that genocide killed thousands of Bangladeshi civilians just to maintain its control over the country, then called the East Pakistan. The struggle against terrorism and extremism for both the countries has not yet ended. Today, New Delhi and Dhaka still stand firm and strong against extremism and terrorism, supporting each other at the time of need. Continuing the same spirit of cooperation, peace, harmony and brotherhood, several policy makers, academicians, Islamic scholars from India and Bangladesh gathered in New Delhi. Discussing the challenges posed by extremism on both sides of the border, representatives of both countries organized the first edition of the Round Table Indo-Bangla Conference on Role of Civil Societies in Strengthening Bilateral Relations. India is my, our trusted friend during uh, 1971. Bangladesh Liberation War, India sent their forces. India take uh, shelter to our freedom fighters and uh, Bangladesh uh, refuses uh, the give uh, foods and others. Uh, so Bangladeshi uh, remember, always remember the help of India and Bangla Bangladeshi people also remembers the help of the India in this liberation war. Pakistani killed Bangladeshi Muslims, Hindus and other peoples on the basis of the language. Our peoples always stand against Pakistani uh, terrorism. Even today, extremism and terrorism triggered under the name of religion or political propaganda initiated by Pakistan is a problem for both the neighboring countries. But Bangladesh, under the leadership of its current government, has been taking serious actions to counter the menace of extremism. In 2018, the Election Commission of Bangladesh banned the participation of Jamaat e Islami, stopping it from contesting elections, stripping its status of a political party. Hence, stopping politically propagated extremism in the country at its source. All while dealing a heavy blow to the political supporters of extremism at the political stage. हम सब लोग एक्सट्रीमिज्म के बात बारे में आतंकवाद के बारे में हम बहुत दिन से इंकलाब कर रहा हूँ अभी इस इंकलाब सर रहा है अभी तक सर रहा है ये ठीक है कि बांग्लादेश प्रेजेंट जो गवर्नमेंट है अभी 2009 से ये गवर्नमेंट अभी पावर में आया ये 2009 से ये गवर्नमेंट अब आतंकवाद की बात कट्टर वालों की बारे में अभी हुई उससे कटवाल के बारे में अभी एक जगह में अभी इंकलाब कर रहा है कि कटवाल की जगह बंगला बंगला में नहीं होगा। The India-Bangladesh relations today have reached far and wide. Not just being limited to bilateral cooperation, the Delhi-Dhaka friendship has gained significant traction even on international platforms like the G20 held in India recently. However, the problem of extremism in India and Bangladesh both has its roots originating from Pakistan. On one side of the border, India has to deal with terror attacks, infiltration attempts, illegal narco trade and false accusations propagated by Pakistan. Bangladesh on the other side has to deal with a politically motivated side of extremism all because Islamabad decides to propagate cross-border terrorism in different versions even when its own people suffer and struggle to fulfill basic amenities. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. 
We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.